Hello friends and welcome back to another episode of the Simple Knit Podcast. My name is Eleanor. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Simple Knit Co and also hanging out here on YouTube sharing with you all of the things that I have been recently making. I hope you're all keeping safe and well. I hope you've got a knitting project to work on because I have a few cool things to share with you today. So I have a few finished projects most of which I don't think were even cast on the last time I spoke to you and the works in progress are actually the same works in progress as last time so that's a little spoiler alert for you but I have made some really good progress on my ongoing works in progress as well but I have some very fun finished objects to share with you today so yeah pour yourself a drink get out your knitting let's have a chat about knitting my favorite thing to do so the first project I have to talk to you about today is what I'm wearing. So this is the Capital V Vest by Rosa Pamar. I've had this in my queue to be knit. I've wanted to knit it for so long, basically I think since the pattern was released. I just think it's really cool. So I will put a photo of me wearing it standing up because it's a little bit hard to see when I'm sitting down. But if I lean back in this really flattering way, you can get the kind of the vibe of the piece. So it's basically a boxy vest with this super deep v-neck that's kind of a statement of it so it's really just like a fun accessory it's a very quick knit and maybe not like a practical practical what is practical not like a practical warm utilitarian thing but it's just a really fun kind of statement piece that I think looks really cool so the original sample I believe is knit in a sport weight yarn held together with a lace weight mohair. I opted to knit it just in a single strand of DK weight yarn. So this is the Bendigo Woolen Mills 8 ply, classic 8 ply, in the silver twist colorway, which is really pretty. It's, I definitely say it reads more blue, it kind of has that washed denim vibe, but it is, the plies are like mostly, uh, bluey silvery gray with one strand of like a nice denim blue that I think is really pretty and it's just a really fun mild colorway and it kind of replicates the effect of having a like single strand of lace weight held together with a thicker yarn so it kind of replicates it but just with the one strand of yarn and for the fact that there's like not very much fabric it's a pretty loose gauge and obviously like pretty airy this is actually quite warm like it does feel significantly warmer than if I was just wearing the skivvy by itself like I can feel the warmth of it as it's on my person so let's get some actual stats on this vest so yeah I said that I said that so I knit this on the recommended needle sizes, which is a five millimeter needle for the body, which is a gauge I really like with um, eight ply yarn, and then down to a four millimeter needle for the ribbing. And I knit the size five. Um, the one thing I did kind of back and forth with quite a bit with this pattern was whether to knit the size four or five, because it's designed to be like obviously oversized, but not too oversized. And with this deep V, you definitely wouldn't want it to be too wide on the shoulders so that it would like fall apart in a really, that's a really great thing to do on YouTube, Eleanor. <laughs> that, so it doesn't like fall apart in a really weird way and be something that you feel like you're having to constantly be fiddling with. So luckily the way the pattern's written, you start at the top, you cast on the back neck stitches, then do the shoulder stitches and the back piece. Then you pick up and knit the two front panels, join it in the round and then pick up and knit the little just the finishings on the arms and the v-neck so when yes when I cast on I could kind of the at least the size four and five probably other sizes as well but you cast on the same number of stitches to start so I could kind of do the increases get to the number of increases for the size four and just have a look at how wide that would be based on my shoulders because for my body I have quite broad shoulders and like a larger bust but quite a short waist so sometimes things like this it can be a little bit hard to work out before you actually see it even with like measuring things without like kind of seeing it against my person what size I wanted and I'm pretty happy I could have gotten away with the four I think but I'm happy that I've got the size five the shoulders are kind of 
nice and white like they do come past the edge of my shoulders a little bit but it's not falling off my neck or anything like that and the v-neck sits quite nicely it is kind of tucking in i think i folded it weird so this is like really really annoying me i need another little block but other than that i'm really happy with it when i was making it i was very worried because even though on this bottom edge i went down to a four millimeter needle for the ribbing because it's just a really short number of ribbed rows on the hem even though i went down the needle size and actually cast off a couple of extra stitches because as an aside one thing in the pattern it's a great pattern in portuguese and english has good instructions but i did notice that for almost all the sizes when you get down to the bottom hem and this was in the english pattern and the portuguese instructions as well because even though i can't read portuguese i can read numbers and um, i'm very smart actually um just if you wanted to know but i um so the bottom hem is in a two by two rib and from all the pictures everything it's just two by two rib all the way around but for almost every size it was not a number of stitches that was divisible by four so i don't know if that's just like a an error in the pattern but i just decreased down a couple of stitches but the point of that story is even with doing that this hem before i blocked it was flipping up like nobody's business um just completely flipped so i was a little bit concerned about that because that's very annoying and would make it really not a very wearable top if the if it was flipping but i didn't really want any more length because as it is as you probably saw when i was standing up this basically comes down to the top of my hip bones the deepest part of the v is virtually at my belly button and then so this kind of is the length of my torso um so I didn't want to add any length and I kind of liked the look of it having quite a small hem. Uh, so I just blocked it like I didn't, I'm a very lazy, I'm very lazy at blocking. I don't really, unless something has really pointy bits, I might use a pin or two, but I just wash it and then lay it out on a towel. I don't have a mat. I don't have like pins and combs and paraphernalia. I just wet it and then lay it flat, mainly because I am not just lazy but I don't want to have to manipulate my fabric so much that then every time I wash it I'm going I have to go through a whole rigmarole to get it to be how I want it to be I want it to kind of be relaxed from the blocking but also the garment to stay that way without too much maintenance so anyway boring story short I just lay it out and really focused when I was laying this flat on pulling out this ribbing and even when it was wet from doing that it stayed flip like it didn't flip up when it when it was wet i also actually now i'm remembering that what i did was once the like first bit of drying was done i actually picked up the towel and put it on top of a um drying rack with the hem like hanging over the edge so there's a little bit of gravity as well so that the hem was blocking downwards i don't know if that did anything but 100% solved this is not going to flip up it's sitting really nicely now so that's the capital v vest i just realized i've been talking about this for a really long time but this knit up really quickly uh despite how much talking i've been doing and i really like it i think it looks really cute and it's a really nice just like winter accessory that i think will fit into my wardrobe really easily so that is finished object number one the next finished object I will have significantly less to talk about. This is another hipster hat by, by Petite Knit. This is a pattern I've made a bunch of times before. I've talked about a bunch of times before. It's just a really nice, simple two by two ribbed hat pattern. I do always knit this in fingering weight yarn instead of DK weight yarn as the pattern is written for. And I like that it just makes, I do have a hair clip in, but it makes a nice like, slightly fitted ribbed hat and that's what it that's what it looks like so this yarn is the regia four ply tweed in the colorway 90 um and it this is just 150 gram ball i have all about that size ball left over so you can definitely get a good fingering weight hat out of the out of 50 grams of fingering weight yarn and I knit the third size, which is, I think, the adult woman size in the pattern. 
Just knit it exactly as per the pattern. Nothing else to say. This yarn is really cute. It's just a pale grey with multicoloured tweed in it that I think looks really nice. And this is just a really nice practical pattern. I, it took forever to finish this because it was just the project that went around in my handbag and I just worked on it when I was out and about. So it didn't see like focused energy put on it. And it was, that's kind of why it was more of that, like that process of having something to work on. Well, I drop it twice, um, but it is a really cute finished object. So that is another little hipster hat. I did cast on another hat that is the exact opposite in that it is huge and impractical. So, oh, it has some unwoven ends. So this is ha, the Faux Chapeau, which is a pattern by Park Williams. And it is designed for a like fluffy, extra bulky yarn like this one. I had, when this pattern came out, I thought, oh, that's really cool. But I kind of had no plans to make it. But there is a episode of Sabrina the Teenage Witch, the Melissa Joan Hart version, uh, when she's with her aunt Vesta, the Raquel Welsh character, and Sabrina is in this like little red outfit and she has like a red fluffy bucket hat on. And I was like, that is really dope. And I reckon a red faux chapeau would give a similar vibe and be something really fun just to have as like a little statement piece. So then it was like the adventure of finding a fluffy yarn. So this is Oh, you can actually see what the yarn's like because I've got an unwoven tail. So it's like that fluffy, like, for making toys yarn. And not the most accessible yarn, but also everywhere that had it, like the regular big box craft shops in Australia, they were all in, like, neutral colours, so kind of, like, teddy brown and maybe, like, baby pink, quite, like, colours for babies and neutrals which was like fine but not what I wanted I did find some instances of like from some brands that did this yarn in red but because they weren't available in Australia it was like ludicrously expensive to get it and I was like it's not really worth spending that much money then I was in Lincraft and this is the house brand at Lincraft it's called Maker Teddy Soft is the yarn and I had a red it's just called red and so I thought perfect bought my two skeins and yeah made this hat and I did the version with the uh, brim stuffed with polyfill so I will just quickly pop it on for you so you can see how cute it is so that is the faux chapeau because the brim is stuffed with polyfill this hat is so unbelievably warm it kind of makes like a little like biosphere of warmth around your head and the gauge is pretty tight um so not tight but it is like a dense full gauge because you are stuffing the brim you do want it to not have polyfill sticking out so that is the faux chapeau let me just give you the proper stats on this project so i made the adult size the adult small medium so there is a larger size um in the pattern park does recommend that it be quite firm and she even said in her version with the stuffed brim that the first time she put it on it felt too tight but then it did stretch out a little bit to be comfortable to wear which is 100 percent what i found as well i think her head circumference is about the same as mine so they are really great instructions for working out which size to pick uh but i just followed what the pattern said and i'm really happy with the fit it's just so cute. It looks so cute. Um, and it's knit on a 6.5 millimeter needle. The worst part of this pattern is the fact that you start with a provisional cast on, which I already dislike doing and having to do it in this kind of yarn where you cannot see what you are doing for the life of you because the yarn is so fluffy, uh, was, um, a pain, an absolute pain. So I, but I did it. I figured, you know, this, a uh, big gauge, not many stitches, I could power through it. So I did, I did the provisional cast on, you knit the brim, and then as you knit the, fold up the brim and knit it together, that's when you stuff it. I did manage to drop one stitch as I was putting the brim together, um, but I was able to use 
when, once I realized and I could see the little run coming in the brim, it was towards the end. So I was actually able to use my cast on edge to kind of pick up and sew up that stitch. So problem solved, even in this really icky yarn that you cannot see what the hell you're doing when you're working on it, I was able to fix that problem. And yeah, I think I knit this in just a couple of evenings on the couch. It was very quick. I don't know if I said, but it's a 6.5 millimeter needle. So a really nice thick yarn on a big needle worked up really quickly and maybe not the most practical thing in my wardrobe, but it is super cute and super fun and not as comical as I thought it would look like. I thought it would look sillier, but I think it's just really adorable. Um, so now my head is very warm and sweaty. And I can't stop looking at how cute I look. Um, but yeah, faux chapeau. Super quick and easy knit. So definitely something that, like, if you feel like giving it a go, just do it. It's fun. Like, it's only a couple of evenings. This yarn was super, super affordable from Lincraft. I don't remember how much it was, but I also got it on, like, super sales. So very affordable product. Tiny bit of polyfill in the brim. And yeah cute and fun knit. Now my last finished object, let me just check I look fine. Yes, I do. Um, the last finished object is a first birthday present for my friend's baby who turned his actually his actual first birthday was yesterday, but his birthday party is tomorrow. I think this is the cutest thing I've ever made. I genuinely, I'm like, oh, does Miles really need um, this because it's very cute. Um, so cute so this is from the volume one of the swaddle pals pattern which is by susan b anderson of barrett Wilco. and in the pattern you get the instructions to make i think there's this little kitty then there is a bear a lion and a bunny and then there are other volumes of the pattern where it gives you other animals but all of them it's to make a little animal friend with a little blankie how freaking cute. Look at this little tail is this little kitty. So this kind of like tiny fiddly knitting, absolutely not something that I thought would ever bring me any pleasure. I had, I had acquired this pattern a while ago because I thought, oh, they look pretty fast and simple to make. So if I want to make little toys as gifts, I can use these and they've got the little blankies as well, which are super cute. And, but this is actually not as fiddly and not as arduous. I literally knit this in less than 24 hours. I sat down like on a Friday night, did the body. And then on the Saturday I did the, all the limbs and the blanket done so fast to do and not super painful. So this is knit seamlessly. Is it from the top down or the bottom up? I can't remember, but basically you knit the head and body in one piece. I think it's bottom up because you like stuff and anyway, you knit the body seamlessly in one piece and stuff it as you go. And then the same thing for the little limbs, you just pick up the stitches. There are quite helpful pictures in the pattern for how to pick up the stitches for the limbs, the ears and the tail. And there are also little video tutorials that are linked in the PDF that are quite easy to access um, just on the either Susan B. Anderson or Barrett Walco YouTube channel for the little techniques that you use. I did make the little tail for the kitty a little bit longer. Um, that's the only real modification that I made. You got the little ears and there is uh, quite nice videos as well of Susan doing the embroidery for the face, which was also something I was worried about because I'm a terrible at any sort of freehand embroidery, but I think the little face actually turned out really super cute. Um, I'm just so proud and it's the, like, the amount of stuffing I put in. It's like the perfect, like it's squishy. It's not too taut. It's just adorable. Um, and I chose to do the cat because the family that this is going to, they have a cat. So thought that would be practical. And also if Miles wants something to suck on, there's a nice little tail, <laughs> which you know what, ba babies are going to shove things in their mouth. So 
The yarn that I used, this is designed for um, an eight ply DK weight yarn. So the body is, I did fingering weight held double. So the brown color is the Peyton's Dreamtime Merino four ply in the colorway Donkey. And the like white cream color is the same base, the Dreamtime Merino four ply in either white or cream. Then for the little face, the nose is the same Dreamtime Merino four ply in black, <laughs> obviously. And then for the little eyes, I was really struggling to get the eyes to look good in this yarn. So I ended up using Bendigo Woolen Mills Luxury 10 ply in Amazon green. So it has little green eyes. And then for the swaddle, I used some Four Seasons Marvel A ply, which is just an acrylic yarn. This color is acid, this really pretty bright green. This is cream and this is cloud. So this I had left over from a cushion that I made for my friend and the cream as well. And then I just had this um, acid blue color and I thought they just looked really fun together. And then for the little eye cord loop and the little bobble, I just, did the, like, yeah, the contrasting colors. So they kind of stood out a little bit. And this bobble is not stuffed or anything and it's not a button or anything. So it should, it's woven on very securely, but should not be a choking hazard if that is a concern as it is when you're giving it to a baby. So very easy, very cute, very quick pattern that just comes out super adorable and yeah, I'm just, I'm so thrilled and I'm glad that it was not too arduous a task to make this because now I know if I have to make a little gifty, little gift stuffy again, there's a pattern that is user friendly, easy to use. I won't hate making it. It's fiddly, but not too fiddly and just a really great little gift knit. And it's just such a cute, such a cute little size for little hands as well. So that is my little swaddle kitty. It's got to go to its new home tomorrow, which I'm a little bit sad about. I'm definitely not making one for myself though. That's a bridge too far. So that is everything that I finished since I last spoke to you. I do have two projects on the needles, both sweater projects, both ones that I had on the needles last time. So I'll just give you a quick little update. The first one is my Na Kraga by Alice Starmore, which is the cabled jumper that I am working on from her Aaron knitting book. So I believe when I last saw you, I had done one sleeve and the front piece. I'm just working on the second sleeve at the moment. So I'm almost finished the increases for the sleeve. So, and then I just have to do the little um, saddle. So just ticky ticking along on this. Um, I'm in no rush. I'm really enjoying the process of making it. It's, it's kind of the perfect blend of keeping you engaged because there's obviously all the different cabled and textured panels, but all of the pattern repeats are super straightforward, super easy to keep track of. So you don't need to be tied to a chart. Um, don't need to be tied to the pattern. You can just kind of pick it up and work on it as you please but it looks really, really beautiful. This yarn is Bendigo Woolen Mills Woodland 8 ply in the colorway Mist, Mist, yes. And it's this, yeah, beautiful gray yarn with some rainbow tweedy flex through it. Uh, so yeah, nearly finished the this sleeve. So I just need to cast on the back piece and knit that and then block, seam, neckband, done. Sounds so easy and straightforward, but yeah, that is where I'm up to with my Nakraga. I think I would like to have it done by August. Um, that's where we kind of get our second cold snap in Brisbane with lots of wind and whatnot. So yeah, ideally I'd like to have it done by August, but I'm in no rush. It's just like a beautiful classic cabled jumper that I'm really enjoying working on. And the other um, project that I'm working on still is the Prairie Skies, which is this jumper by Imke von Natusius. 
and it's a combined crochet and knitting pattern. So I think when I last spoke to you, I was finishing up assembling the yoke, which is made up of all these little granny squares. So as you can see, I've definitely done that. So I sewed together the front and back panels and seamed the shoulders. It's definitely going to need another good block now that it's all put together and got the knitting bits added, but I think that'll be fine. So I think, yeah, I assembled the front and back pieces. I then blocked them. Then I seamed the shoulders and picked up the stitches. So once you've got the front and back piece assembled, um, I actually, straight after that, I just picked up and knit the neckband because otherwise it was just this weird, loose, flappy edge. And because it is quite a wide necked jumper, um, even just like trying it on, it was sitting like very, it wasn't, I wanted to put the neckband on so I could see how it would actually sit. And I did end up doing a couple more rows. Uh, so making the neckband a little bit longer, higher than is written in the pattern. It does have this little V-neck with this nice little detail. Um, but I do prefer things a little bit closer around my neck. So I did make the neckband a little bit wider. You then pick up the two sides. So you do one side, then the other and work the rest of the yoke and sleeves and things with short rows and then join in the round, which is where I'm up to. I have no idea what I was just showing you, but there you go. So I've separate picked up the yoke separated for the sleeves. As you can see, um, it is like a little bit, there's a little bit of um, like puckering, I guess, because, well, just from the number of stitches that you're picking up. Um, it was really easy actually to pick up the stitches, even though you were picking up a lot of stitches because you just, it had instructions for like how many stitches per granny square to pick up. You could just kind of count to a smaller number at each granny square. And it also made it really easy to pick up the stitches really evenly around the around the sides of the body, which is obviously really important because that determines the placement of your sleeve hole, armhole, your sleeve. <laughs> so it was made it really easy to pick up the stitches. Um, my crochet gauge is a lot tighter than my knitting gauge. Um, and so I did have to go up quite a few hook sizes. I went up to a 5.5 millimeter hook. I believe in the pattern it suggests doing a four or 4.5 millimeter hook but to get my granny squares to be the right size I had to go up to a 5.5 millimeter um, and the join along the sleeve I even went up I think to a 6.5 millimeter crochet hook to do the seaming because I didn't want it to be too tight but even so you can kind of see it's a little bit tight along that shoulder seam but hopefully I will be able to smooth that out when I block it. I have not checked what my knitting gauge is. I just used the recommended needle size and maybe could have gone down one, but it's not too egregious that I am pretty sure that'll be fine once I've blocked it out. But yeah, I'm making good progress down the body. I think it wants about 30 centimeters or so from the armhole separation to where you start the ribbing. And that's probably like about 15 between 15 and 20 centimeters. So I'm making really good progress. And this is the, because this is the stockinette project I have on the needles. This is the one that I've been schlepping around in my handbag for knitting on the go. It's almost too big for that now. I really should cast something else on to carry around with me, but yeah, I just carry a huge purse so that I can carry my whole jumper with me and the giant cake of yarn. This yarn, I didn't say, it's Bendigo Woolen Mills Rustic 8 Ply in Snow Cloud, this really beautiful mid-toned grey. So there is like a, I'll just show you this, there's like an entire leaf in my project bag. Like, Where did that come from? It has been in this, the project bag has been either on my couch or in my handbag. How? How? Stuff like that happens to me all the time. And I promise I do take care of my things, but oh, it's just wild. Anyway, <laughs> that is 
everything that I've been knitting on since I last spoke to you. So please let me know in the comments below what you are working on at the moment. Do you have any exciting upcoming knitting plans? I'm at the stage because I'm kind of really in the weeds with these two projects. As you can see, I've been casting on lots of like little bits and pieces to kind of give me that like fast, in slightly more instant satisfaction with like small projects. But I'm already, I'm kind of in the at the point in these projects where I'm starting to think about what I'll make once I finish them. So all I want to do, I'm just like daydreaming. I've got yarn for a few more garment projects and a few other things that I just sit and wistfully stare at while I plug away on my works in progress. But hopefully by the time I see you next, um, I'll have some good progress, maybe some new fun cast-ons to show you. Uh, but yeah, definitely let me know in the comments below what you're working on. Is there anything exciting that you're planning on casting on soon? I would love to hear about it. So please let me know. I hope you're all uh, keeping safe and well, that you're enjoying your crafting and getting a lot of joy and self-care from your creative projects. And I will see you soon for another podcast episode. Bye.